Good day to all. Myself, Dr. Reena Thakur, Professor, Medical Surgical Nursing Department. Today, I will deal with the role of nurse in care of elderly. As we know that it is a elderly people are bigger section of the community who require specific care during their admission. In today's uh, lecture, we will see that what are the roles of nurses in providing care to elderly people. First, we will start the topic with life is half spent before we know what it is. As our life is very unpredictable and we don't know what can be happen in our future. So first we will see gerontological or geriatric nursing. It is a field of nursing that specializes in the care of elderly. It is the field where the nurses or physicians and all the uh, hospital team will provide care to the elderly people who are hospitalized in hospital. The standards and scope of gerontological nursing practice was originally developed in 1969 by the American Nurses Association and it was revised in 1976 and again in 1987. The nurses or nurse gerontologist is can be either a specialist or a journalist that provide comprehensive care to older people by combining the nursing process of assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, evaluation with the specialized knowledge of aging as nurses are the imparting part of the care uh, to the gerontological patients or the elderly patients and they will provide care by <coughs> making a nursing process or a nursing care plan which is properly assessed and with the help of that they will make diagnosis and according to that they will plan the care of patient as the goals of uh, care which are providing by the nurses first goal is promoting and maintaining the functional status of the patient as nurses first responsibility is to maintain their functional status as <coughs> secondly they have to helping the older adults to identify and use their strength to achieve optimal independence next is setting setting is the place where the nurses providing care to the elderly people there are mainly three setting that is acute care that will be provided in hospital skilled and assisted living that can be provided uh, in general uh, units of the hospital then third is community and home settings in that the patient or elderly people who are chronically ill and they cannot afford the hospitalized care they will <coughs> be taking care in the community and home settings also uh, the care which will be provided by the nurses that can be managed care managed care that will be managed by the nurses and physician and all the healthcare team acute care that will be for the limited time period but that is very specific care third is long term care long term care will be provided in the uh, cases of uh, uh, where the elderly people are chronically ill that time the long term care will be provided fourth is the home health care that will be provided at the home setting by the nurses Fifth is case management that is the specific care and specific uh, uh, treatments are given to the patient according to their diagnosis. Next thing is the nursing management as we will deal here all uh, overall nursing management of the elderly people that will be provided by the nurses. As assessment is the first process of any nursing management in that assessment is as with all the age groups, assessment of older adult will provide the database for the rest of the nursing process. So assessment should be very keen and fine uh, uh, techniques that should be used for assessing the elderly people. As in the assessment, the assessment of the geriatric patient is called as comprehensive geriatric assessment. This comprehensive geriatric assessment is often 
conducted at a geriatric evaluation unit by an interdisciplinary geriatric assessment team and the team included members nurse physicians assistants technicians and social workers this is the whole team will provide comprehensive geriatric assessment and on the basis of these assessment the priority needs or diagnosis will be planned by the nurses then when we carrying out a plan of action the nurses may need to modify the approach and techniques used on the basis of physical status of the elderly so during the assessment and planning the care of the patient nurses must first assess the physical status of the elderly and their functional status according to that she has to plan the nursing care plan in nursing care plan she will include uh, different different areas and those areas or aspects include health promotion in that the nurses will carrying out the interventions which will promote the health of adults elderly adults teaching older adults as it is a difficult part for uh, to teach elder uh, elderly because they are very experienced and the nurses must use very much patience in providing or in giving teaching to older adults high surgical risk the patients who are having high surgical risk she also support those elderly that if they are not properly do, taking care of themselves then they will have surgical risk nosocomial infections as we know what are the nosocomial infections these are the infections which the patient is having during the hospitalization and elderly are having their less immunity reason because of that they are more prone to get the nosocomial infections hospital discharge in hospital discharge the elderly uh, patients are very much uh, will be oriented regarding what all care they have to take care during uh, their home setting and after the discharge what all care they have to uh, do at home set geriatric rehabilitation certain diseases or certain cases are there where the treatment is there but the patient or elderly is required rehabilitation so these services are also provided by the hospital then assistive devices other devices uh, so many devices which will help the elderly to live their life comfortably the assistive devices will be designed and they will be uh, their information will be given to the elderly safety as elderly are very prone to have infection plus they are very prone to having falls because of their physical status also so their physical mental and uh, uh, safety is very important pain management in certain diseases the patient is having pain so to relieve pain the pain management have to be do uh, have to be done medication use in the medication use the elderly are very prone to have a problem of memory loss so their medication uh, should be properly written on a proper form or a chart can be given to them for their medication depression they are in the age where they are very prone to get the depression so for depression also some nursing interventions are required for nutritional therapy then sleep pattern last is behavioral management and use of restraints as use of restraints is uh, not indicated until unless it is very essential now we will come to the nursing management in that nursing management the first management is the respiratory system in respiratory system we will do the assessment of abnormal breath sounds cough and changes in rate of respiration on the basis of the assessment the nursing diagnosis will be made ineffective airway clearance related to bronchospasm 
increased production of secretions and decreased in energy goal for the snatch and diagnosis is to maintain a patent airway to achieve this goal the interventions which are required are first is auscultate sounds wheezes and ronchies second maintain respiration at the normal rate note any dyspnea fourth assume position of comfort and elevate the head end of the patient fifth instruct patient and family to minimize the pollution like dust smoke feather pillows last second assist with abdominal or post lip breathing and last is increase the fluid intake to 3000 ml per day these are the interventions that we have to plan according to that we will evaluate that airway clearance will be improved at how much level that will be improved will be shown by a person's a patient's respiratory rate his changes in rate of respiration and his breath sounds will be normal second diagnosis in the respiratory system is on the basis of assessment dyspneic and patient is restless by this we will make a nursing diagnosis of impaired gas exchange related to altered oxygen supply to alveol that will lead to alveolar destruction ventilation perfusion inequality cellular respiration dysfunction or excessive mucus production for this we will make a goal to improve in gaseous exchange for the achieving this goal we will plan the interventions that is first is to assess the respiratory rate and depth to evaluate the degree of respiratory distress second we will elevate the head of the bed and encourage deep slow and post lip breathing by that oxygen delivery may be improved by upright position and also it prevent hypoxemia next diagnosis or next intervention is administer oxygen and maintain oxygen saturation older adults may have reduced thirst reflex that result in dehydration so adequate hydration is very important to liquefy the secretions in order to cough up the secretions next we have to instruct the patient and family to schedule rest periods between activities because older patients may have decreased exertional capacity therefore need rest periods to conserve respiratory effort we also instruct the patient and family regarding lifestyle changes that may be required patients living area must be moved to first floor that will be close to bathroom and have a small meal and frequent rest period in order to re reduce oxygen demand these all interventions are evaluated on the basis of reports that show decrease in dyspnea and shows improvement in expiratory flow rate also maintain adequate ventilation next is diagnosis related to nervous system in that first is assessment we will do assessment regarding memory deficit whether the patient is able to remember the things or not changes in memory status how much level of memory can be deprived distractibility patient's concentration that we have to assess and patient is unable to make decision on the basis of these assessment the nursing diagnosis will be made distributed disturbed thought process related to physiologic changes 
and psychological conflicts. For this diagnosis, the goal is to maintain or regain normal thought process. For achieving this goal, the interventions are first is to assess the attention span and distractibility. We have to assess the patient attention span and concentration that will be shortened. Next, we have to instruct the family members to reduce negative criticism and arguments in front of them because these negative criticism will increase the pessimism to the patient's behavior. So if the family members will avoid criticizing and negative uh, arguments in front of the patient, the patient will reduce the pessimistic behavior. Then listen to them whatever they say with full attention because it conveys interest and worth to individual enhancing self-esteem. Then we instruct in relaxation techniques or diversional activity to the patient that will help them to refocus the attention. Last intervention is to avoid the client to stay alone because if the patient is stay alone it will increase their anxiety and that will lead to loss of control. We will evaluate these intervention by recognizing changes in thinking and behavior of the patient. Next now assessment is done in that interrupted sleep will be seen in the patient, awakening earlier than desired, then difficulty in falling asleep. The patient will falling on the bed but he will not able to sleep for a longer time. On the basis of assessment, the nursing diagnosis will be made disturbed sleep pattern related to psychological stress, inactivity, environmental changes and illness. This diagnosis will require a goal to maintain a normal sleeping pattern. To achieve this goal, the interventions are ascertain usual sleep habits and changes that are occurring. These will determine need for intervention and promotes a relaxing soothing effect. We have to promote the bedtime comfort regime for the patient that is massage, a warm bath or a glass of milk that will help to induce sleep. Also we have to promote relaxation measures and reduce noise and light at the time of patients sleeping. That will promote atmosphere which is, con uh, which is conducive to sleep. We will evaluate these interventions by sleep pattern improvement in the patient and the patient verbalizes increased sense of well-being and feeling rested. Next assessment is Increase in body temperature, flushed skin, warm touch, patient will feel warm to touch, increase respiratory rate. These assessment will make a diagnosis of hypothermia related to increased metabolic rate. To achieve this, we make a goal to maintain a normal temperature. For achieving this goal, the interventions are monitor client temperature, the degree and the pattern, chills, chills, profuse diaphoresis. The temperature of the patient will be 102 to 103 degrees Celsius, suggest infectious disease. Next intervention is provide tepid sponge bath to the patient to decrease temperature. Also administer antibiotics if other treatment is not, non-pharmacological treatment is not responding. Maintain bed rest to decrease myocardial workload. 
We will evaluate these interventions by bringing the temperature within the, its normal range. Next is diagnosis related to integumentary system. In that, we will assess the per elderly patient's dry skin, macerated skin or itching on the skin. Diagnosis is made impaired skin integrity related to disruption of skin surface. For this, the goal is to maintain normal healthy skin. We will plan intervention to achieve this goal is to protect the skin from maceration that will prevent skin breakdown. Avoid excess moisture because moisture breaks the skin. Use mild soap to minimize sensitivity reactions. Keep the nails cut short to prevent injury to the skin. Use skin moisturizers in winter season to prevent skin dryness and also maintain daily routine of exercise. We will evaluate that skin integrity is maintained and there will be absence of maceration. In urinary system, the assessment is oligouria that is the decreased secretion of urine. Input is greater than output. Edema will be seen, weight gain observed in the patient and restlessness. The nursing diagnosis is excess fluid volume related to compromised regulatory mechanisms. Goal is to maintain a normal urinary output. Interventions required are record intake and output so that the low urine output may be first indicator of acute failure so that intake and output record is very important. Weigh the patient daily at the same time so that we can assess the fluid status level of the patient. Assess skin, face and dependent areas for assessing edema. Monitor heart rate, blood pressure and cardiovascular pressure, central venous pressure so that the tachycardia and hypertension can occur because of the failure of kidney. So early assessment of any kidney diagnosis. We will evaluate that the patient's weight is stable, there will be absence of edema and patient's urine output is normal. In gastrointestinal system, we will assess the body weight is 10% or more over the ideal weight and sedentary lifestyle of the patient. The nursing diagnosis is imbalanced nutrition more than body requirement related to decreased physical activities and decreased metabolic weight. The goal is to maintain adequate body weight. To achieve this goal, we will plan the interventions. First is to assess patients dietary history, intake and eating pattern. As elderly are tend to gain the weight easily because of decreased activities and low metabolic rates. We also identify the amount of weight loss needed for optimal body size. It will provide a basis for dietary planning. We also weigh the patient daily so that it will provide us goal achievement for weight loss information. We also provide activities for patient that is not associated with meals. It will utilize calories and provide diversion from eating. Develop the exercise program such as walking and low impact exercises. It will increase utilization of calories and maintain musculoskeletal system. We will evaluate it by normal nutritional pattern is maintained. In musculoskeletal system, altered mobility, skin breakdown and physical discomfort, wounds, falls and delusions. These are the common assessment will be made in the elderly patients, will be seen in the elderly patients. Nursing diagnosis is risk for injury related to dementia, poor judgment, medications, choking and Alzheimer's disease. Goal is to make the patient safe from environmental hazards. To achieve this goal, interventions are 
to assess the patient's surrounding for hazards and remove them because decreased awareness will lead to accidents maintain adequate lighting and clear pathways that will allow the patient to be able to find the way without danger of falling we also instruct regarding removal or locking up knives sharp objects cleaning supplies chemicals medications smoking we also instruct to apply protective goods near electrical outlets and stove knobs etc instruct to keep the furniture against wall remove wheels on the bed and chairs and keep well lighted room so that it will prevent physical injury from any accidents burns overdoses or ingestions in evaluation the patient will maintain functional ability within the limitations and he will exhibit no evidence of skin breakdown in neuro neuro system neurological system the senses include assessment of inability to modulate the speech and diminished hearing ability diagnosis will be impaired verbal communication related to hearing loss and degenerative changes goal is to maintain a normal verbal communication interventions required are regarding speech or assess the reason for lack of communication that will help us to identify the problem establish the therapeutic nurse client relationship through active listening so that it will help in dealing with the communication problems make eye contact and speak face to face so that it convey interest and promote contacts speak slowly using simple sentences it will assist in easy grasping and next is hearing deficit check ears for excess cerumen because hardened ear wax may decrease hearing capacity ask if hearing is hearing aid is present that client may have but may not use it refers to speech therapist or ent physician to enhance the capacity and to determine the extent of loss we will evaluate on the basis of that patient is establishes method of communication demonstrates verbal and non verbal communication in reproductive system verbalization of difficulties and changes in sexual behavior the nursing diagnosis will be ineffective sexuality pattern related to altered body function perception of sexual identity perception of changes in sexual activity goal is to establish positive sexual experience interventions required are assess the desires and comfort in discussing concern about sexual activity patient may embarrassed on how to approach the subject include pattern include partner in discussion and plan so that patient may desire to discuss alone or with the partner present inform the patient and family about medication affecting sexual activities so that medication that affect sexual function refers to see therapist for assistance as appropriate it will provide alternative for satisfying experience the patient will be able to access therapist as needed for further assistance with the sexual activities in immune system assessment is fever and rashes the nursing diagnosis is risk for infection related to decreased cellular reaction and presence of existing infection either immunosuppression goal is to minimize infection interventions required are encourage good hand washing that will reducing the spread of infection investigate sudden changes as recurring fever continuous cough these complications may arise construct instruct the use of handkerchief and mask to prevent spreading of infection monitor the effectiveness of antimicrobial therapy so that improvement should occur within the 24 to 48 hours screen the visitors so that individual at risk as at high risk for exposure to infection the goal is achieved timely resolution of current infection without any 
complication. These all we have seen were the nursing management or nursing diagnosis of all the systems of this elderly care. As at the end of the class I want to say that aging is a normal process of time related changes that begins with the birth and continues throughout the life. And since aging is normal and occurrence that encompasses all the experiences of life, care and concern of the elderly cannot be limited to one discipline but is the best provided through our cooperative efforts. That was all regarding the role of nurses in care of elderly. Thank you.